Estimating the weight of your pumpkin is super easy to do and all you need is one tool and that is a tape measure. I have this tape measure that I like because it's double-sided so when you run out of room, which you will pretty quickly, you just flip it around and the numbers continue. I'll put a link in the description of the tape measure I like to use but anyone should do. This diagram shows how to measure your pumpkin. So you take your tape measure and the first measurement is going to be what we call side to side. So you go from one side of the pumpkin to the other over the tallest part of the pumpkin. Then you're gonna do the over the top from the stem end to the blossom end. Again, you're gonna do this over the tallest part of the pumpkin. Lastly, you're going to take the circumference. You want the circumference to be parallel to the ground around the biggest part of the pumpkin. So it may not be right in the middle. It may be super far down, super far up. Just get the biggest measurement you can parallel to the ground. Now I'll show you how to do it in person. So the three measurements are gonna be side to side and you wanna do it over the biggest part of the pumpkin. So we'll go across. So this is 90 inches. Then we'll do front to back. Okay, that's 88 inches. And then the last measurement is circumference. This takes a little practice. You wanna do your best to keep it fairly parallel to the ground and also get over the widest part of the pumpkin. So for me, that's 135.5 inches. Make sure when you do your side to side and front to back measurements, you're measuring straight down, not in like that or out like that. You want it straight down. Once you get your three measurements, you wanna add them together. So we got 90 plus 88 plus 135.5. That comes out to 313.5. Next, what you do is you get yourself this wonderful chart. You can find this on the GPC website at gpc1.org. And what you do is you find your OTT, that stands for over the top measurement. So the sum of all of your measurements. You find it in the chart and in our case they had 313 and 314 so our weight was something in between those two meaning it's probably somewhere between 719 pounds and 726 pounds so probably 722, 723 pounds. So that's your estimate using the OTT chart. Now if you want to take it to the next level you can see that there's a formula on the bottom of this chart. You can plug this formula into an Excel spreadsheet and enter the numbers yourself and make your own beautiful spreadsheet. So I will show you my spreadsheet next, which I use all the time. Here you can see my Excel spreadsheet. So the way I have it set up is the first column, I have days after pollination. And then going across, I have every single pumpkin that I've ever grown. I color coordinate them mainly because I have OCD. And then I also have the pollination date right under it. So my two current pumpkins are in these two columns and I like having these all side by side because I can compare how I'm doing. Unfortunately this year I'm actually not doing too great yet but we'll know for sure once we hit DAP 30, meaning 30 days after pollination, whether it's going to be a bust or if we actually have a chance at getting a personal best. So the way I do it is I plug in that formula that was on the bottom of that chart and then I plug it in uh, up here into the cell and you have to be careful because there's two sections there's that one and that one that corresponds to the OTT so make sure that you fill both of these in and don't get rid of this negative number right here so you fill in the appropriate cell for that spot and that spot and then you just kind of drag that formula down and it'll match with your OTT. When you have it as zero, the, the value comes out as negative 5.7. That's just the way the formula works. Uh, once you plug in an OTT, say 170, it'll automatically calculate what it thinks your poundage is. Uh, so 
on this next sheet, I have a graph of all my pumpkins. So I copied and pasted all the values, made a chart out of it, and I like it just to see how I compare to prior years. Um, this one here was my best that split on me. Um, my actual personal best was the green, the purple squares. Um, it went heavy versus this one, which actually went light. They typically follow the same growth curve for the most part. Uh, this one split on me. This one got squash vine borer. This one got bacterial wilt. So all the ones that kind of taper off are ones that had stuff happen to them. So uh, I like having this. I also did it to compare whether it made a difference whether I used Florel or not. Theoretically, Florel is supposed to extend this area before it goes higher and then stays higher for longer. I didn't notice a difference in the two years that I did that. So it's kind of fun to play around with everything, but that's my Excel sheet for you.